It's so boring. Nothing happens. He just walks around and doesn't say anything. What's even the point? I'm not actually here to accuse those people of being Philistines. Sincerely, I'm here to explain why I overall admire Ben Rivers' two years at sea. Just as a preface, I happen to much prefer some of the more recent features credited to Ben Rivers, and though I've grown a relative appreciation of two years at sea, a part of me feels as though it is almost a work of a novelty greatness rather than, say, revelatory greatness. Not that I abide by any strict greatness scale. You see, Two Years at Sea could have been, more or less, conceptually realised at any stage in film history. It might not have had the technology to look as aesthetically pretty or precise as it does being released in 2011, I'll, I'll elaborate more on this in depth later, before it seems to be exploring some of the very intuitive yet uniquely distinct formats which a feature film can take, especially compared to other expressive mediums. In this respect, and to be complimentary, it reminds me of James Benning's stated motivations, although in a narrative rather than non-narrative respect. Although by modern standards, and perhaps any times, it might be said that Two Years at Sea is a non-narrative film. Oh yeah, I chose not to refer to this film as a documentary, as Ben Rivers apparently did not intend it as one, although I wouldn't passionately disagree with anyone choosing to list it as a documentary film due to intrinsic attributes of its production. A lot of my subsequent discussion of this film could potentially apply to slow cinemas, creative intents in general, although it might be suggested that Two Years at Sea is particularly non-eventful and unconventionally narrative even as far as slow cinema is concerned. It is a kind of mock documentary, really. One of the suggestions that could have been made upon cinema's inception, especially given its initial lack of spoken dialogue, was the creation of a film about a figure in an isolated, perhaps open, environment. An audience would witness them wander around, pondering what they are thinking, leaving even more to a reader's imagination, the player's psychological profile, or what John Goddard would later describe as the basic data of consciousness, than a novel possibly could, and yet at the same time illustrating the internal dialogues that besiege the human psyche finer, less contentiously, than any other artistic medium. Film, with its capturing of recognisable moving human behaviour, a canvas to map thoughts onto, could serve as the most universal narrative language, particularly in communion with that more often cited universal language, music slash sound. Now the question as to whether this would have been a worthwhile direction to drive cinema toward at any stage of its development is probably a matter of opinion. For much of film history, very generally speaking, a film's initial production was related to its commercial viability. At no point in time, and not even now, could a film project conceptually, creatively similar to Two Years at Sea achieve any major commercial success. Even Hollywood's Old Man in the Sea adaptation contained a tacky voiceover and a mid-production firing for poor Fred Zinnemann. This is probably extremely, especially true of the early feature film era, 2011 may be one of the earliest years wherein such a production is both either potentially commercially viable for its creator and producers, or economically creatively achievable for its creator given the current technology. By the early 21st century, it had become feasible to release a film such as Two Years at Sea and have it find distribution via a festival screening. From the perspective of these distributors, the DVD market in conjunction with internet shopping allowed the more widespread availability of art house, to use a somewhat crude term, titles to become a plausibly profitable venture. Meanwhile, 21st century technology ensured a more local logistical viability to shoot this film in the first place. A part of what makes Two Years at Sea effective is its realised authenticity. Its environment transmits a you are there luminosity, or dread rather. This could never have been possibly achieved with affordable digital cameras of the 1990s. Actually, perhaps not even with digital cameras now. See, Ben Rivers, he actually shot this production on a wind-up Bolex camera using black and white 16mm film. So could this film had truly been made? This exact film at any point post the market accessibility of 16mm film cameras? Not necessarily either. 21st century technology is vital to this film's realisation, as far as its sound design is concerned. 
along with Ben Rivers and his performer, Jake Williams, more on him shortly, sound designer Chuli Shuring was on a free people present during this film's production, though Guardian writer Steve Rose had visited the site to subsequently inform us this, of course. I'm not convinced this film's immaculate sound design, essential to it containing any affect at all, was achievable in the prior century without extensive funding. Here I would love to interview Chuli Shuring about her work on Two Years at Sea and find out more. So now I'll address this film's performer, Jake Williams. Jake Williams is a man who lives a solitary life in the Scottish wilderness to this day. Two Years at Sea attempts to depict an artistic expression of Jake Williams' daily routine. As I suggested earlier, Ben Rivers does not consider this film a documentary, so really neither do I. It is clearly an act of creative exaggeration. Exaggeration is the term used in that Guardian piece by Ben, uh, which by, by Steve Rose, he quotes Ben Rivers, he uses Ben Rivers, he chooses to use the word exaggeration of Jake Williams rather than a document of him. Williams is a muse rather than a subject. So regarding an earlier stated opinion, why did I claim that this film held novelty greatness as opposed to revelatory greatness? Because Two Years at Sea is arguably a one-trick pony. It is debatable whether the film contains any surprises beyond the first 20, even 10 minutes. Mystery, or rather ambiguity, abounds, but no truly new cinematic ideas are in sight, as far as I can tell. This is not a bad thing, but I'll again state that I believe much of this film's success is entirely due to its 21st century production values, particularly the sound design, and less to do with its actual conceptual relevance to the cinematic art. I am aware that this film contains at least one vaguely surreal sequence which, although aesthetically enchanting, doesn't really convince me that the film isn't a one-trick pony. Well, okay, I don't feel great about calling Two Years at Sea a one-trick pony, but it often comes across as one. That I don't feel bad about stating. Don't get me wrong, aesthetically, technically, to an extent thematically, I love this film. But do I consider it a work of unimaginable genius, or merely an unconventional exercise? Two Years at Sea is a beautiful novelty, rather than a unique revelation. I'll say it again though, it is easy to imagine this film having several creative or technical precedents throughout the 20th century, but it is impossible to expect any of these would contain 2011's Two Years at Sea's precise, satiating, aesthetic effectiveness. Some of Ben Rivers' later credits, namely 2013's A Spell Toward Off the Darkness, which is an ethereal black metal documentary, and or 2019's Krabi 2562, which is a surrealist exploration of its titular town in Thailand, these two films would sooner fall into the category of revelatory cinematic genius, in my opinion. Nevertheless, I'll again state my admiration of Two Years at Sea. If you're interested, I'll wholly recommend it. And so that's my endorsement of Two Years at Sea. I apologise to Ben Rivers for playing devil's advocate for some of this review. I just wanted to address a nagging in my brain, in order to fully affirm my appreciation of his lucidly experiential film. There may be those who feel as though I didn't praise this film as much as it may deserve. Those people are essentially correct. There was just a what is the point of this film tension which I felt like addressing, and hopefully I have sufficiently. Thank you all, have a spectacular day.